Test, test. Test, test, one, two. Test, test, one, two. Warrior Wednesdays, we live, y'all. What up, where my warriors at? Let me get a little light in this building. Hopefully this is good. Oh, let me get this light right. What up, family? Joe Paul, Reg Hunt, what up? Uh, let me see what we doing. How my light look? Is this lighting okay? What up, guys? Warrior Wednesdays. Shout out to my man, Derek Ferguson. Vibranium Gold in the building. Lloyd Beck. Coming in from the UK. Lloyd, what up? My brother, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing, Lloyd. Keep up the great work. Um, hopefully y'all got a chance to check out this Rich Dollars interview. Anybody who has aspirations of learning about the behind the scenes of the reality TV show industry, that guy, he dropped a lot of jewels. I think that, um, you know, we are used to Rich Dollars, the character he portrays on, um, Love and Hip Hop New York, but to really just talk to him and dive deep into who he is as a human being, um, understand the business sensibilities behind the moves he makes. He gave an incredible interview. So, so if you know anybody who's interested in um, reality TV, definitely check out this week's interview with Rich Dollars. Who else we got in here? But um, I'm happy to have y'all here. Look forward to these nights. Look forward to Mondays and Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Y'all know how we do. Soji, what up? Hope you good, kid. I'm looking forward to um speaking to your group. And, and for that matter, guys, you know, shout to my man Soji. I'll definitely be speaking to your group. Anybody need me to speak to the corporate offices or work with? Uh, detention centers, schools, whatever. Give me a shout. Let me know. Y'all know how we do. We support one another. I'll definitely come in and do what I do best. Oh, my brother, Eddie Lolo joined. Ed, what up? Always a pleasure seeing my brother, Eddie Lopez, in the building. Always puts a smile on my face. Uh, who is that? Black Millionaire? Think I got that right? I think I even bought my, my glasses. But we give it about another two minutes, y'all. Ed Hennis, what you doing? Ain't you supposed to be on the road? Shout out to my man, Ed Hennis. Ed, you killed it last night. I hope y'all are tuning in to Ed Hennis every Tuesday night on the comeback trail. Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central Time. Ed goes on live. And he just got this comeback community that I, I think everybody need to be tuned in. Ed, I, I really enjoyed it last night. You killed it, brother. Um, I thought you was on tour. Ain't you in Memphis or something tonight? But shout to my man, Ed. Is that Joshia? Joshia, what up? Oh, I love it. I love it, y'all. Is that Rich Dollars? Richie D, I just got through talking about the... Um, your, your interview, you killed it. I literally just got through talking about it. My man Rich Dollars in the building. Shout out to Rich. Gave an incredible interview this week. Um, You know, I definitely, again, for anybody who's interested in reality TV, understanding what it's like behind the scenes and in front of the camera, you need to check that interview out on iTunes. Check it out on um, YouTube, Spotify, all of those different um, streaming platforms. I give it one more minute. We'll get into this thing. Yeah, Rich, Rich really killed that interview. I, it, it, if you're not interested in um reality TV, if you know somebody else who's interested in it, both from the standpoint of being in front of the camera and also a producer, um, what the contracts look like, negotiating contracts, interviewing process, this is an interview you do not want to miss. Uh, so we get started, y'all. You know. First and foremost, I want to update my community, our community, 
I can't thank you guys enough for your prayers. I can't thank you guys enough for your support. All of the, the texts and the DMs and people just hit me with the well wishes when it came to my mother. Glory be to God. My mother made it out of surgery safely yesterday. So, you know, God is, is, is beyond awesome. And, you know, she sends her thanks and her love to you guys in the community. She had an opportunity to see the Monday night uh, where I just really use her story as a sense of inspiration for all of us. She she just tells the community, thank you. And um, I say from the bottom of my heart, y'all, for everybody who sent that woman's name up in prayer, this is what it's about. Like th this, I, I can't thank y'all enough. And just knowing that she went under that knife Anytime they start messing with your heart is very, very dangerous. It's not something to take lightly in the fact that she came out. She got a big old smile on her face and, and she's doing well. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you to all of the movers in this community. Thank you so much. Um, with that being said, week over week, guys, as, you, as we're doing this Warrior Wednesdays, I notice it, it takes dips. It takes turns. And we're learning from one another, um, you know, and one of the things that I have found that it's been very successful in is when we throw topics out there and, and we let the community jump in and just ask the questions. So last week, if you guys um, were on live and shout to my man, Chef Mike, a day one brother from the Bronx. Mike, what up? I see you, bro. Um, last week, we had Derek Ferguson, who is. Uh, probably one of the smartest people I know I've ever met. <laughs> this man, this guy is genius level, but he has helped to, he's, he's an entrepreneur and he's helped to build multi-million dollar businesses, not once, not twice, but several times over. The man knows what he's doing. Um, so we were on last week and, you know, Derek just took a large, you know, chunk of, of this Wednesday night to really dive deep into, uh, building out a business plan. And, you know, he and I were speaking offline because I just thought it was incredible. He gave such an incredible master's class. And I was like, Derek, I would love to have you back. And he agreed to come back on and, you know, just shares wisdom. And we just throw topics out. And this way the community can really get involved and ask these questions directly from somebody like myself, somebody like Derek Ferguson. You know, I'm a marketing guy through and through. Derek is a, a builder of businesses. He's finance. He's somebody who's on the other side of the table, um, just in terms of helping to lay the groundwork and the foundation for these companies to stand on. So Derek is was so gracious and, and agreed to come on week over week and really just let us tap into his knowledge. So what I'd like to do, um, I want to bring Derek into the conversation early. And Derek, if you are around, hit that um, request button. And, and let's start talking because one of the things he and I were talking about offline is just identifying how to make your business profitable, knowing when your business is profitable, because so many people just go out and they come out the gate uh, without doing the numbers, without really thinking their business plan through, and they're working at a deficit. They're not necessarily profitable, um, you know, even though the numbers might reflect that there's money coming in, they're operating at a deficit. So... Derek can really simplify this process. And as he's speaking for anybody who is in the build, in the process of building your business, feel free to start piling on with these questions after he goes through what he does and, and we can ask him questions direct. So let me see if he's in the building here. Hold on. Uh, Derek, where you at? Okay, for whatever reason, Derek, I'm getting a notice. Um, if you can hear me, it says you need the latest version of Instagram to join. I don't even know what that means. Uh, try to send a request, Derek, because I see you saying that you're here. I see you. But for whatever reason, every time I'm hitting that button, it says that you need the latest version of Instagram to join, whatever that is. I tell you, this Instagram is something else, y'all. Ferg, not sure what's going on on your side. Manny, what up? Uh, yeah, not sure what's going on. It says uh, you got to 
you need the latest version of Instagram. So I don't know if you have to update on your end, but while you're doing that, we'll keep it moving. Guys, one of the things that, um, you know, until Derek uh, gets his, his Instagram updated, is that first and foremost, anybody who wants to jump in the live with any direct questions about anything you're going through business-wise right now, please hit the request button and I'll let you in. Um, let me see if there's anybody waiting to get in this thing. Okay. Somebody, we were talking last week and, and you know, my background, as you guys know, is marketing, marketing and promotion. So I often tell you guys, this community is bigger than Sean Prez. I learn as much from it as hopefully God willing that you learn. So I got a question for y'all and y'all can either jump in this conversation or you can type in um, to the, to the, to the, what you call it? Type into the chat right now. Hold on. Let me see. Vibranium gold. Let me see. All right. I'll come back to mine and I'm gonna let Derek in. Hold on. Let's see if Instagram is working this week. God willing. It'll let him in. Here we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. D Ferg, what's up, brother? All right. Can you hear me? Hey, you just fine. What what, what happened? Uh, he said you didn't have the latest version of Instagram. Man, I had to update it. As soon as I updated it, it it was good. But I, you know, I, I'm glad you told me that. I would have never known what was going on. Yeah, that's the first time I even seen that. I, I was like, huh? What's that about? Yeah. Hey, first and foremost, prayers, man. I'm so glad to hear about your mom. Uh, I, I had her in my prayers. It's funny when she came on the live. I don't remember when, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it just like I lost my mom two years ago, and I she remember. just reminded me of my mom. Cause my mom would be on my live like that, like <laughs> so. <laughs> so man, I'm so I'm so I feel so so glad that she got through it, and we'll keep her in our prayers. Derek, thank you so much for your prayers, brother. You always do reach out, and thank you so much. But you know, I know you're a man of faith. And, um, you know, just you let me know that you were praying for. I pre And I know it's real. And I know you're a guy that can actually get a prayer through. So thank you, mm -hmm. brother. Great, great, great. So what I thought, um, you know, just about just to set, set, set the stage for tonight, you know, I thought I would just break down just a real simple. You don't have to know what a debit is, a credit is. You don't have to ever have taken an accounting class. But if you're running a business right now, I was going to give you a simple way to assess where you are. Uh, and this is as simple as it gets. This is like when I was 11 years old, helping my dad with his business. You know, this is, this is as simple as it gets. It first starts with your checkbook or your check, however you keep your, your, your checking information. And the first thing I will say is, you know, make sure if you're running a business, have a separate checkbook for all your business related activity that will make this process a lot simple if you're commingling personal stuff with your business stuff that's just going to make it harder to be able to uh you know to be able to uh really assess your information um so uh, i would say segregate your business information right now you have your checkbook two things right Two things are going on with your checking account. You're either depositing money or you're withdrawing money. You're withdrawing money or, or writing checks. Okay? So the first thing I want you to do is take a month. So let's say, you know, your, your month of January, January 2021. Simple, simple starting point. Add up all your deposits. Total that number. Then add up all your withdrawals and checks. And total up that number. Real simple, right? So far. So yep. obviously, if you had more checks and withdrawals than deposits, then you know your cash balance went down. If you had more deposits than checks and withdrawals, you know your cash balance went up. But let's dig a little further. So everybody's with me so far. So you just simple, added up my deposits, added up my withdrawals for the month. It would be shocking to... <laughs> to uh, anyone how many people don't even do that on a monthly basis just to know what came in and what went out. Now the next, uh, the next step is out of your deposits, subtract any money you contributed to the business that month. 
So if you had, you know, if you if you if you if you basically are used to putting five hundred or thousand dollars into the business every month, subtract that out of your deposits. And then out of your withdrawals and your checks, subtract any money you pay to yourself out of your business account, any money that you would consider a one-time expense. So it was like I bought a truck for the business or I bought a computer system or I bought a sound system. Those are capital expenditures. So you take that out of your withdrawal number. The third thing you're going to take out is if you paid back any loans. So maybe you had in there, you know, somebody lent you 5000 you paid them back in that month. So you take that out of your withdrawal number. So now what you're left with in your deposits should be, should be primarily the money you earned and, and the money you earned, the cash you collected from the money you earned should be in your deposits. And on your checks and withdrawal side should be the money you paid out relating to your business, right? So now you have a new total of deposits and a new total of withdrawals and checks, and you want to then uh, you want to then subtract your withdrawals from your deposits and see where you are. That's going to be a close approximation of what's going on with your business. Not exact, but close approximation. Again, if this is positive, you're feeling good. If this is negative, you're not feeling good, right? But there's one additional step, and um, you know, I'll see some questions coming in. The next step is, so that's your month of January. So now you want to look at what's about to happen in your month of February. So when you look at January, you now you have your deposits. So you look at anything you can say in January is going to happen again in February. So I know I'm renting out this apartment, and every month I'm going to get X amount. So that's going to happen again in February. The other thing you're going to look at you're going to look at is any, any business you did in January, but you didn't collect the money yet. So put that into your February forecast. So I sold something 30 day terms. I'm going to get the money in February. So now you have anything recurring. So something you received in January that you're going to receive again in February. And then anything you have already done the business for, but haven't collected the money. You want to put that now in your February, what I'm calling your February forecasted deposits on the expense side you want to look at everything that all your expenses for that month of january and you want to say what is a recurring expense so that means it's going to happen again in february electricity an office space what have you and you uh you put that in your february forecast a recurring expense then you also want to put in that february forecast uh any uh, in, any expense that you incurred in January, but you didn't pay yet. So you had 30 day terms on something. So you bought uh, whatever you bought some t-shirts that you're about to print, print on, but you didn't have to pay them for 30 days, but you're going to pay for them in, in February. So now you have a reasonable forecast of what's going to happen in February. So what you want to do is take that forecast in February month, take your total deposits minus your total expenses. And you want to then see is that net positive or net negative. So what you've now been able to do is to break down without any accounting terms, what's on the balance sheet, what's in accounts receivable, what's in the accounts payable. I got a rough idea of where I am. If I'm negative on all of those, if all of those uh, totals I got to were all negative, now I got to dive in further and understand why is this negative. If I'm positive on all of them, that feels good, like I'm in the right direction, and I can start really assessing how much money I'm actually making and how much money I can actually make. So we just did a simple thing, really on a cash basis. My accountants right now are probably going crazy, like, wait a second, you gotta accrue this and you gotta depreciate. This is just simple. This is this is every person, lay person, you know, how do I really assess where I am? And that's just a starting point to get you started. And this is something you should be doing on a regular basis. You don't have to have an accounting book. All you need is your checkbook and a little bit of simple math. So I'll stop there for a second and just see if there are any questions or thoughts about that. Okay. I'll, I got some questions. Okay. And anybody who has questions, please put your questions in, but I'll start it off. Derek, just off the top of my head, 
let's say I got I got a business online, right? Uh, what? Did, okay, for instance, I just started a business. I, uh, I got my website up. I'm selling products online. Should I open up a bank account? day one that is specific to the business even if i haven't started generating income yet uh i would yes <laughs> short answer yes you want to have as soon as you have one penny that you're spending that's business related i recommend you have a separate business account really yes okay Another question, and guys, please, I, I don't want to be the only one asking questions here. So for any questions that you guys have for Derek, please throw your questions um, in, in, in the comments and he'll attack them. Derek, if, if, if I'm selling goods and products um, online, maybe I can't forecast what's going to sell next month. I, I know what's coming in today, but it's hard to say that next month X amount of dollars is going to come in. How do, how do I attack something like that if I'm in a business where I'm essentially waiting for orders to come in, but, it, but it's unpredictable? So, so your first place to start, that's why I, I, I took you through it the way I took you, took you through it, is the first place to start is what did I do last month, mm -hmm. right? That's your first place to start. So when you say, well, I don't know what I'm going to do the next month, start with what you did the last month, right? And that gives you your baseline. So if you do this calculation and all you do is you do your roll forward for February and all you do is take exactly what you sold in January, then you're going to be able to say, well, if I only sell what I sold in January, where am I going to end up? And then you can even figure out, well, I need to sell double what I'm selling in January for this to be positive. Um, so again, I would start when in doubt, you start with what you know as a fact. And the fact is you have that one month of information and that's your actual for now, right? And I think you can then, if you, so, the, the, you know, what, what you can end up doing is at a minimum in your head, you should always have your break-even analysis, right? So what does that mean? Say, so your break-even analysis is where do I at least not lose money? Right. So, again, very simply, we're, we're, we're simple. So I know I got some real sophisticated movers out there. So don't don't jump on my back yet. We could go there, too. Right now we're going simple. But if at the end of the day, let's just say, for example, very simply, I have five hundred dollars is my my forecasted deposits for February. And I have a thousand dollars is my forecasted expenses. So now I look at that and I said, man, and the five hundred is based on what I did in January. So if I look at that, I said, man, if I don't get to at least a thousand on my sales side, I'm gonna lose, I'm I'm gonna lose cash, right? So I'm gonna lose money in that month. So I need to get, I need to at least figure out how do I get to a thousand, or else this is never gonna work. Got you. Okay, I saw I saw a question here. Go ahead. A couple of good questions, but uh, how do I go back? Uh uh, got to know if your you margins. Just scroll your margins are good. Uh, uh, oh, we were talking. Oh, credit cards. This is a very, very good and important question. I would again, I would recommend having a separate business credit card, even if they're all in your name. And you say, I use my Visa for my business, and I use my Amex for my personal. I would still try to use, um, you know, you use only one card for your business and one card for your personal. But if you do use your personal credit card, treat it like an employee expense and reimburse yourself from your business for your business expenses. This way you're tracking as you go what your business expenses are, your actual business expenses are, and you can, again, just look at your banking ledger and know what your ins and outs are. So, again, I would, I would, I would dedicate a credit card to your business if you can but if you if you only have one card let's say for example for example and you got to use that for personal and business treat your business expenses as a reimbursable expense the way you would at a company or anywhere else and have your business account 
reimburse your personal account for your credit card expenses that relate to business. Good. Somebody just had a question here. Chef Mike Ash, uh, do you follow the same model for a restaurant? Because it's totally di because it's a totally different beast. Does it matter the business? So let me tell you something about the restaurant business. We we of course uh, ran restaurants uh, when I was at Combs Justin's Restaurant. Mm -hmm. and this is this is critical. Every single night, we got a nightly P and L. We got a daily P and L from Justin's every day. The manager, what did you take in? It's not very different. But you can do this on a daily basis. What did you take in? What did you pay for that day? I paid for, we had to go get more chicken, blah, 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 blah. So cash in, cash out on a daily basis. The restaurant business is that particular where on a day-to-day -day basis, you have to make adjustments. And just to get deeper, again, we're not going to get fully sophisticated, but we would get, uh, we would get gross margins we will get gross margins by menu item on a nightly basis. So how much money did you make on the salmon? How much money did you make on the chicken on a nightly basis? You can make real-time pricing decisions, real-time purchase decisions. So, uh, you know, so restaurants, I would say similar, similar approach, again, without the sophistication. How much money did I bring in? How much money did I... Did I pay out from my daily wages to my daily food uh, to my daily marketing if I'm doing any marketing? And how much money did I bring in? I can tell you right now because I live this every day for like, you know, 15 years. Mondays are a slow night, you know, unless you have Monday night football at Justin's. Tuesdays are a slow night. You're going to make 80% of your money on Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's the restaurant business. But when you really look at that, you could go out of business, <laughs> you know, Monday through Wednesday if you don't have enough cash to fund yourself until you get to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent, but I would say very similar in the restaurant business, and you actually have enough information to do a daily uh, assessment of where you are uh, in the restaurant business. Hey, Derek, sticking to the restaurant business, you said that it was so specific that you guys would know what you made on chicken or what you made on salmon. But just in terms of time, I know, is there programs out there that, that you guys work with? Because nobody's sitting there counting, I sold this many pieces of chicken this week. And I understand we're talking specific to the restaurant industry, but I want to go just a little deeper only because I know that the, that industry in particular there is a huge failure rate. Most yeah. people who go into to restaurants, it doesn't make it past a year or two. So, yeah. so were you guys using any software? Is there anything that you can um, recommend? Yeah, that, that's a point of purchase software. So mm -hmm. I think anybody in the restaurant business or retail garment business, uh, that's valuable software. Um, just... Um, you know, that is, that's like day one requirement uh, is to, you know, have that, that level of software so that you can get your information real time like that. You have to set it up, load it the right way so you can get this margin information. Uh, but yeah, no, that's, that, that is, again, if you're starting a restaurant and don't have the right software to give you this type of real time information, you're behind the eight ball. That's, that's a valuable, I would almost say, put that in your upfront investment you have to make in a restaurant along with your upfront, you know, chairs and tables, Like you got to have, uh, you know, you got, you got, you got to have that point of purchase software. You had a couple of good questions that came in, Derek. Not sure if you see it on your side, but you had about two or three that just came in back to back. I thought were pretty good. Uh, so how do you keep track of inventory? Very good question. I'll give you a, I'll give you a real life example. Uh, myself and a group of friends, we started a Sterling Optical franchise on 125th Street. Um, we uh, launching the business, brand new business, trying to figure out what demand was going to be. 
<laughs> we hired a guy. Everybody, every one of my partners remembers his name. I won't say his name right now, but we hired a guy who supposedly had a lot of experience in the eyewear business. So he told us the amount of inventory we needed to buy. When I tell you he was about 10 times too high in terms of <laughs> the amount of inventory we needed, it was about 10x over what we really needed. And we're sitting there with all this inventory, having spent all this money that we're not going to make back for maybe a full year. It would take a year to sell this inventory. So again, in the restaurant business, you know, the reason why you have to be on top of your inventory is two things. On a weekly basis, you need to measure your inventory because you need to really understand your theft. So again, I'm, I'm, you know, this is one, one thing I was involved in. So I'm sure there's somebody here that has more detailed knowledge to me, but like, you know, uh, you, you remember our guy, Andre Sweet, they would measure the bottles, the, the, the liquor bottles, and they'd measure where they were each night. And over the course of a week, you could figure out how much liquor was used, right? And you could, you could figure out how much money you took in for that, so for if it's Ciroc vodka, okay, I use five and a half bottles of Ciroc vodka. How much money did I take in for Ciroc vodka? If there's a big disconnect, somebody was either giving out free drinks or stealing vodka, uh, but you don't know that unless you're tracking your inventory. And and you know, in the case of 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 Justin's, that was like a weekly reconciliation process. Wow. Wow. Let me see. I got a, another question someone had for you. I don't know if you can see him on your side. Someone asked you another question. I got, I got a, another great, I got a great CFO that just joined Tony Abrahams. So if I can't answer a question, I'll throw it, <laughs> I'll throw it over to him. <laughs> Shout out to Tony Abrahams. What up? <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm uh, looking at, and then, uh, so I, I, obviously Joe Paul has got a ton of wisdom. He's dropping. So just keep reading what he's writing. Uh, this is a good question. At what point do you decide to pay yourself? Very good Excellent question. Excellent question. Excellent. Very good question. Um, you know, I always think about how do you keep going as long as you can, right? So it's unrealistic to say, you know, you know, you you literally have to look at your savings and say, if I take no money out of this business, how long can I live, right? And, you know, even as entrepreneurs go, you may even need that little side job, that, you know, that little uh, I'm going to work at Staples at night or something just to keep your dream going because you have to live, right? So you have to decide, can I live without taking mo any money out of the business or figure out what I need to take out on, on a regular basis to just to just live. So it's either you're going to have you know enough savings, or you're going to have you know uh, you know a little side job or something that brings in some income, or you're going to have to take money out of your business. But document what you're taking out, understand what it's requiring uh, of you, and you and and then you can factor that into is this business working for me or not? So if I, A, don't have any money to take out or the money I need to take out is, is draining all of my cash, you got to figure something out. Like you got to figure out a way to make more money or to get some more money from other places. I, I, a quick story, my dad was an entrepreneur all of his life. He ran a, a trucking company and, you know, generally did really well, but there was a period of time where we weren't seeing him at nights. So I didn't know what was going on. I'm a kid. I don't know what's happening, you know, what, what adults do. But turned out he had to take a little night job for, you know, a little period there just to keep funding the business. And that's what, you know, you, you, you say it better than me, Fred, that's what movers do. And mm -hmm. he would get through those, those low points, and he ended up running a successful business, really, from the time he was 18 till he passed away when he was 67. So, uh, but sometimes you got to find that money that's going to support you while you're building your business. You know, Derek, that, that leads me to an interesting um, question for you. 
in terms of paying yourself, I've actually read books, and and I I find that that my real life experience is a little different from the books that I've read, especially when I was coming up. But they always say, pay yourself first, pay yourself first, pay yourself first. And as an entrepreneur, I just I agree with you. I I, I never found that. Uh, in real life, that is valuable information because if you're taking from the business, the business suffers. But a lot of experts or a lot of so-called um, uh, just for experts out there saying, you know, authorities put out there, you should pay yourself first. Just to, to double down on that question, yeah. do, do you feel... Do you stand by the answer you just gave or, or, or do you feel like, you know, these 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 people out there who are writing these books, yeah, they, they well, have the right idea. You should yeah. take the money off the top. Well, you, you, you know, friends, from your own experience, this entrepreneurship thing, if there was one answer, <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Like everybody would be getting it right. And I see, uh, I see Mike Barber, who uh, I remember from back in the days, on yep. here and he's, he's you know his point is these are good points like pay yourself first I, I here's how i would say it pay yourself first if you can pay yourself <laughs> you know what i mean like i think you can't pay yourself and then go out of business like and that's why i think at the end of the day it depends on where you are in in the life cycle of your business and you know i think the point that mike barber is making which is a good point at a certain point when you're ready to go package up your business, maybe get an investor, get a loan, to show consistent payroll. That may be an objective, right? But we all know if you've ever started your own business, early on it's survival. Whew. You know? That, that's what it is. It's survival. That's and exactly what it is. So I would say all of these things are probably right at some period of time, but, you know, not, not all periods of time. Got you. Uh, let's see what other questions we have for the guru over here. Any can other you, questions? Can you hire your kids? I've seen a lot of stuff about just f financial, uh, you know, kind of like, well, start paying your kids. That's the way to not have to pay taxes. Um, again, if, if you're at the point where that's what you're thinking about, <laughs> then you already, you know, have figured out that you're making money your smooth sailing. So now I'm figuring out how do I put money in trust for my kids? How do I pay my kids? I don't quite, you know, there's always some, you know, and, and like I said, I got some of the, some of the greatest, I, you know, I was a CPA at one point. I got Tony Abrahams on here who these are CPAs extraordinaire. There's always something you can do, but honestly, I think successful business is pure and simple, right? <laughs> I'm making more money than I'm spending. And I don't like, you know, all of the, 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 the ideas about, you know, paying your kids and all that. I, I don't, I honestly, I never had the luxury of thinking about that when I'm in the midst of running a business, <laughs> I'm in the midst of figuring out how do I drive profitability of this business? So, you know, and I see uh, Tony saying child labor laws are real. <laughs> you know, there's a lot, there's a lot like I, I would, spend the time thinking about how to drive your business then thinking about you know set your, your kids of course their trust trust funds you could set up there's all kind of ways to do it but honestly that's that's like a successful business person's problem not not a startup you know derek if if, if i can even chime in here because you again you're right if you if you are at the point where you're thinking about hiring your kids you're probably doing better than most. Um, but if we were to take that same question just slightly differently, uh, you know, hiring friends and family, and not even from a, a purely profit loss standpoint, writing off on your taxes, any of that stuff. One of the things that I've learned, and, and this might be for another conversation, but I think it's something that, that all of our movers need to consider because truth be told, when you are starting a business, you don't have a lot of money. 
to go out there and hire great talent. You just don't. Uh, and you wind up hiring people who are close to you, people who are dedicated, see your vision, who are willing to take less, but ultimately they may not have the skill set. So one of the things that um, I would say to all of our movers that I've learned, and it's a very difficult lesson to learn, especially when you're a loyal person, but there is a big difference between people who get you out of the starting gate and people who help to grow your business and take it to the next level. So, Derek, I, you know, I, this is not a purely uh, numbers question that I'm asking, but just from your experience, when when do you know to make that transition? Because it does come to a point where you now, okay, you're rocking and rolling and the, 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 the friends and family that you brought in in the beginning, they were great for that time period. But if you're trying to go from, they might have been able to take you from zero to 100,000. But now you're trying to go from 100,000 to a million. It, that, that same team may not be the team that get you there. Yeah. When do you I, know it's time to transition? Yeah, I, th I think you, you summed it up right. I mean, and just to revisit that last question, I thought the question was more around, is there an angle or some benefit to hiring your kids? I mean, I was hired by my father and he was paying me $5 an hour, but I was really working. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was really contributing. You know, I was working, you know, I was doing mechanic work, which I wasn't good at. Then eventually I was keeping his books, but you know, he paid me like an employee, but I was actually doing something. So yeah, I think, yeah, you go to where you can and you know, old school, uh, Southern, you know, uh, uh, tradition, you, your father got a business, you're going to work for that business as soon as you're able to do anything of value. But I think, yeah, you're right, Pres. When you, you know, you, you do not win long term by not having the right players at the right positions. In fact, you probably have lost yourself some money. Um, and I just would say that, you know, one of the things, one of the great tidbits my father gave me was I remember a group of my friends and I was start starting a business and I'm talking to him about it. I'm all excited. And it was like 10 of us or something like that. Some crazy number, too many, too many people to really run a business with. And he was like, okay, so how, you know, how are you splitting up the ownership? I was like, oh, we're just doing it, you know, splitting it down the middle, you know, 10% each. He was like, why? He's like, are you all bringing the same value? You know what I mean? And I was like, well, I guess so. Maybe, maybe not. I'm spending more time on it. That I, he's like, he's like, first off, I don't recommend you having any partners, A. But B, if you have partners, got to figure out what each partner is bringing to the table. Same thing with employees. Um, you, know, you know, that is the backbone of how you're going to be successful as a business. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't, Again, nothing is, this is not 100% the case, but in some cases, you may be better off doing some jobs yourself than bringing in somebody that really isn't equipped to do it that you're then going to have to figure out what to do with them later. But I will tell you, even with bigger size businesses, even with businesses we launched at Combs, there are periods where you need different skill sets. So there's, a, there's like the growth period. I can think of Sean John. We had tremendous growth. And we had, you know, the management team was set up for those people that were just going to grow, 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 grow. Then we hit a recession. And we needed more of a professional manager. And I don't know if you remember this, Prez. We brought in a, a seasoned veteran, like almost 55 years old, which at the time seemed, you know, seemed like the oldest human being you could ever imagine <laughs> came yeah. in and, and ran Sean John for a couple of years I remember. to provide that professional management to really break down the product line profitability and, and just show that discipline. And that's what the business needed at that time. So you're going to see that with businesses at all sizes that you're going to need different things over the life cycle of the business. Yeah, I, 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 I would agree. And it, it may, you know, it is no, it's no one right answer. Like you said, if that was the case, all entrepreneurs would be winning. Um, 
you kind of play it by ear. You you know you you play it as the market changes. But one of the things that you know, if I can speak to any of the movers out there, it's a hard lesson to learn. But business is just that. It, it it's business, and it requires making very difficult decisions. And at times, you may have to make decisions that impact other people's livelihoods. But at the end of the day, the goal is to keep your doors open. The goal is to live to fight another day. So if you outgrow talent, or like you said, Derek, in in, in the case of um, bringing on, and I do remember um, at that period we, 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 where that older um, talent was brought on, and it was like, Really? To run shows on? But that, that's just what, what's needed. You have to do what's best for the business. And, and it's just that simple. And I think that so often people um, people let personal get in the way of making business decisions. I know I'm a victim of it myself. Yeah. There's a question here, which is talking about advertising costs at Sean John. I'll just use it as an opportunity to talk about advertising costs over time. Uh, you know, the way I always think about advertising costs financially is as a percentage of sales, right? So over steady state, most businesses, you're going to see your advertising costs in a range of 10 to 20% of your sales. And early on in the life cycle of a business, that may be much higher because your sales may be low. So that could be as high as 40 to 50%. But over a steady state, you know, and, and you just think about it, it's a simple math equation. Like how much can you spend on advertising and still make money? It has to kind of level out to a, a steady state range. And depending on the business, some businesses are more advertising heavy, but depending on the business, like 10 to 20% is kind of where you want to land ultimately so that you have enough room to still make profit. But I would tell you, Sean John, as an example, the greatest advertising we had was uh, the brand showing up in videos, the brand showing up on magazines. I remember one time, you can't buy the front cover of a magazine. You can't buy that as an advertiser. And I remember one time, I think the Source magazine, somebody was like decked out in Sean John. Essentially, it was a front page, front cover ad yeah. for Sean John that you can't even buy. So, you know, in that case, uh, just the viral back then before viral was even viral, but just the viral nature of influencers and people wearing the product, the dollar value of that was, uh, was higher than the actual dollar value spent on marketing. You know, Derek, that, that's, that's interesting. I never knew, uh, you, you just enlightened me. I never knew, uh, Sean John in particular, or just in general, you should look at an advertising budget as 10 to 20 percent of your overall revenue. I, I didn't realize, I thought you just go, you know, I, I, I didn't realize that, that you sit in the back office and say, okay, you know, we, we can pull no more than 20 percent and, and put that toward advertising to stay profitable. So that's that's great knowledge, even for myself. Yeah, and one of the things, we'll get into it in maybe another session, is where do you find information like this? Like, you know, uh, you, there's a lot of great public information. So I can go right now and figure out, on average, for public companies, let's say public apparel companies, I can find out what the top public apparel companies spend on advertising and marketing as a percentage of sales and and go find the 10 biggest or the average across the 10 and see what they're spending. And again, it, it's going to, you know, when you're starting a business, that percentage may start off higher, but what is your ultimate target? That helps to find it because those are successful, profitable businesses. And if they're, you know, if they're able to spend, you know, whatever the percentage is, you know, that's a longer term target for yourself to get to in order to be profitable. Gotcha. Got you. You know, that, and that's, again, it's great information because I didn't know that. Obviously, we know public companies have, have to put their records out there and be transparent, but I didn't realize you could go and see what percentage uh, of their budget they're allocating toward advertising. 
So that's great Absolutely. information. Absolutely. Okay, we got any other questions for Derek Ferguson? Derek, you 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 are the guru. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Berg is the guru. What do we got? Somebody, somebody. I don't know. I mean, it's it's similar to food costs in a restaurant. I think that's more of a statement than 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 a question. Okay, so, go ahead, Derek. Yeah, I just 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 to, just to wrap up, like before you get to have to even know accounting or anything sophisticated, know that your checkbook will tell you a lot of information. <laughs> and you could go to your checkbook and find out a lot about what's going on with your business. Keep it segregated so you know what's business related and what's not. And just, you know, like, I don't understand people who say, you know, I don't reconcile my, my bank account or I don't look at my bank statements. Like, I mean, that's, you know, that that to me is someone who's not going to really be successful unless they're really fortunate and they're making that much money where it doesn't matter. Hey, Derek, can I, can I tell you something you told me years ago? You're not even going to remember this. I don't remember at what period um, in my life you told me this. But obviously, you know um, our accountant uh, for many years, Callie. Yes. Um, and – Myself, like so many other entrepreneurs, and this is something you you movers need to listen to. You must listen to. Uh, I, I'm 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 a I'm a hunter. You know, I'm out there trying to make the kill. I was out there focused on growing the business. That's all. I was laser focused, and for me, for Sean. I don't want to. I don't want to be bogged down with the books. I don't want to be <laughs> bogged down with those numbers. That that was painful for me. And I remember sitting in your office, and you told me you was like, "Sean, you got to carve out time at least once a month to sit down and go over the numbers, if for nothing." And I'm like, "For what? Like, like you, know, <laughs> you think it's about feelings? And yeah. you like, no, I don't have nothing to do with that. Like, people make mistakes. You need to know what's coming in, what's going out." Oh, and that was some of the best advice you ever gave me because to this day, we meet once a month. To this day. And and, and it started because of your advice, but it, you were right. There, there were me knowing the numbers. It helps me forecast. It helps me allocate. Uh, I have found inconsistencies, not that it had anything to do with theft or, or, or malicious intent, People just sometimes make mistakes. So for all of you movers, pay attention to the books. You have to. But go ahead, Derek. No, I mean, that's that's so on point. And, you know, one of the things, you know, hopefully at another session we'll get into is, you know, when you're growing your business, the other thing you can discover is what product lines in your business are more profitable and which ones are less profitable. So you may really be busting your behind driving one part of the business. When you come back and look at the numbers, you're like, I'm making 10% on that business and I'm making 80% over here. Like, why am I driving this 10% business when I could spend half the time and make this 80%? And that again, just comes back to, again, I agree. I, and this is a thing I, I, I don't, I, to be an entrepreneur, you got to be out there hunting, going out there, you know, you know, eating what you kill and all of that. But imagine if you're doing all of that and you know your numbers. Yeah, you, you, you're, un, you're unstoppable. And, you know, we hear all of these horror stories. And again, this is a whole other conversation um, where, where you see people who, you thought should have millions and millions of dollars and come to find out, you know, they maybe taxes weren't paid. Maybe there were just uh, some inconsistencies in the books for whatever reason. So I, I, I feel like it is such important information, whether you can afford an account or not, whether you're a startup or you are a large scale company, pay attention to the books. Those numbers, it, it, it makes all the difference because that's why you're in business is for the numbers. Yeah. Mike Barber is asking a question. Should you hire someone from the beginning if you're not that person? I would say absolutely. If you can't afford that much, have them come in once a month just to even do what we just talked about. Go through your, your checkbook, give you some information, 
Call up Callie Crowder. <laughs> I don't know if she's still doing it or not. But, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so important because if you don't do it, <laughs> you'll be sitting back trying to figure out why you lost all your money. Uh, and that's not a good place to be. So I don't think you, you know, you can, you can budget for it appropriately. If you can't afford someone in, like, every, every week or every day, just say, like, I need you to come in once a month for one hour. Most of I mean, honestly, like, for me, I've seen so much of this stuff, you know, an hour a month. I can tell you so much about your business in one hour a month. You know what I mean? That's for me, but almost not just me. I'm saying an accountant or uh, entrepreneur that understands finance and numbers, they can tell you a lot about your business and not a lot, not a lot amount of time. But if I could chime in something, there, and this is, again, for all you movers out there, even outside of the numbers, even outside of an accountant, the, the question is just as relevant. Um, should you hire somebody if, if, if this is not your forte? I would still tell you, if you can afford somebody, whether it is a part-time, like, to me, knowing what you're good at is one thing, but knowing what you're not great at is even better. Like, your time, we, we only have 24 hours in a day, nothing more. How you use your time, especially as an entrepreneur, is critical. So just like we're talking about know the numbers, know the numbers, know the numbers, you should be that detailed with your time. Knowing how you are spending every single minute of every single hour of every single day because you can audit your own time and realize, you know what, I didn't spend two, three hours doing this that I'm not great at, and, you know, I can bring somebody in and maybe it might cost me a little bit of money up front, but it would allow me to focus on what I do really good and put time back into my life and bring more money back in, and it didn't even cost me that much. So I would say just like you have to audit those books, audit your own time and figure out what you're great at, what you're not great at, and if you can afford, and a lot of times... It, it's it's not like you're going out there and you're hire, you're hiring some some you know Harvard. Sometimes you can find local people who can just do the work and take it off your plate, and they're great at what they do, and let you be great at what you do. Yeah, and I can tell you, and Tony and I started way back at CPA firm a bazillion years ago. But you know, when you when you're there and you're an accountant and you're learning. Like you, 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 sometimes you'll pick up little engagements just to, to gain more knowledge or to help somebody, you know, is that, you know, you, you're, you're new, you're, you're young in the business, but you, you can really, you know, you can really find somebody like that that can help you out. And I see also a nice little gem from Joe Paul about if you do have a business banker, they can provide some of those services for free. I also see Tony Abraham's offering his services for a thousand dollars, that's probably a thousand dollars per minute, knowing Tony. But <laughs> <laughs> you may have to build up to get to get to that level. <laughs> yeah, Tony, don't come on here gouging on movers. This is a community, <laughs> brother. If you you part of the movers community, so lower them rates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Derek, we're gonna wrap up. Um, great job, great job, Derek. You'll be back next week. Yes, sir. And, and, and guys, really start to, to uh, and Derek, you know, do you know what topic we're going to jump into next week or, or you let me know and I'll, and I'll announce it on Monday? Why don't we use a few minutes here at the end and just have people put into the comments topics they're interested in. I was going oh, to definitely, uh, I was going to, I was thinking about something like, uh, you know, something like your product line. We talked about profitability but what about now your product line profitability what that is that be, so that's like for each business you're in or each segment of your business how are you determining and figuring out how much money you're making uh in each segment of your business and where you should be focusing your energy i see uh uh joe paul's talking about may maybe the topic is startup financing uh we can definitely we can we can talk about that um so yeah, let's um uh yeah, let let's just let's talk about it, Prez, and we can figure out what the right what the right topic is.
Please, guys, like, at the end of the day, this is, this is our community. Our. Not mine, not Derek's, not any of you guys individually. Jump in. If, 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 if we're asking for topics, please get involved. You guys know what you need to talk about. If we can help, if we can bring stuff to the table, then great. But take advantage of the moment where we're asking, what topics are you guys um, dealing with at this moment? Somebody said business plans. We just we talked about that, I think, last week. We can go back into that. Business credit, I think, is another great one. Competition, uh, Tony put in there. Comp how, how do you, how, you know, how do you competition differentiators? That's a great one. Yeah, that's a great one. Market analysis. It's another great one. Yeah. Yep. I, okay, I, I, guys, do me a favor if you don't mind. If you're not currently following Derek Ferguson, please go to the icon up at the top. All you got to do is hit it. Um, it will split my handle with his handle and just follow him now please go ahead and dm us if you think of anything throughout the week any topics that you guys want um to be discussed next week on warrior wednesdays and we will definitely prepare for it and try to have some of the best answers that we can provide for you derek i appreciate you brother thanks prez and, and again prayers uh, for, for your mom Oh, thank you so much, Derek. I, I'm definitely going to let her know. As soon as I'm done, I'm hopping on the call with her. Okay, um, perfect. So I'll let her know he, um, that, that you asked about her and, and you had her in your prayers. But I Absolutely. told her to hope for good. Absolutely. Derek, see you next week. All right. Be good. Uh, movers, movers. If Okay, shout to Derek Ferguson first and foremost. Thanks, Deferred, for coming on with all of your infinite wisdom. Uh, next week, and I like to keep this um, at an hour, so we're just tipping over the hours point right now. If any of you guys have any specific questions, again, DM myself, DM Derek Ferguson. He'll be back next week. Derek did an amazing job. Uh, uh, and he, Also, I'm a marketing person through and through. If you guys, because one thing is the books, but you have to promote and you have to market your businesses and, and, and your service. So if there's ever any um, marketing questions that you have, let's bring them to the table because most business cannot afford to survive if nobody knows that they exist. So let's continue to ask these questions again. Um, I'll see you guys next Monday, 7 p.m. Motivation Monday. Um, check out that Rich Dollars interview. Um, if you haven't already, and you know, let's just keep supporting each other and keep growing this community. One of the things I always ask you guys, I should have asked at the top, was the minute you come on, tag five, ten of your friends and let them know that we are on live. Let's grow this community and let's learn from one another. Peace and love, y'all. I will see you guys next week. And um, again, y'all know what I always say: movers move, y'all. Movers move. Get out there and make power moves. See y'all next week. One.